<laughs> Gosh, you Hi everybody, my name is Ryan from Make Test Battle, and today I'm going to be walking you through a mod guide for the Nerf Demolisher. With a couple of simple tools and some parts, we'll be turning this wimpy blaster into a foam flinging machine. Begin by unscrewing all of the external screws. Note that not all of the screws are the same size. I like to keep my screws in a magnet tray. Take the grenade pump off, then take the two shell pieces apart. Disconnect the internal wire at the clip. We need to remove all of the internal components. Start with this side and remove the internal screws. The shell is glued together as well, so you'll need to use a knife or other tool to separate them. When you're done, take the two halves apart. This is the infamous thermal resistor. Remove it. We need to take out the battery plates. Bend up the tabs from the inside, then pull them out with pliers. We're done with this half of the shell for now. We don't want anything interfering, so remove all of the internal components and keep them aside. We need access to the motors inside the motor cage, so unscrew it and remove it. Most of the rest of the components are electrical or mechanical locks. Remove everything and keep them aside. You will need to keep the trigger, the rev trigger and retaining plate, the magazine catch, the door jam catch, and the retaining piece. Everything else is not needed. Hold on to the small springs, though. They can be useful for other mods. Make sure to keep all of the needed parts safe. We need to take the shell apart to modify it to fit our new motors. So again, unscrew the internal screws and use a knife to carefully break the adhesive. We do not need to remove the tack rail. Now we begin to size up our wire. Thread some wire through this hole and run it down to where we will eventually mount our replacement microswitch. This is where floppy silicon wire really comes into its own. We need a plug for our LiPo, which will hide in the battery tray. Run a length of red wire from the micro switch and black wire from the motors to the battery compartment. Don't worry if they're not precise, we will trim these down to length later. The whole point of this mod is to upgrade the motors. Remove the back straps and snip off the connections. Before we can separate the halves, remove the rubber shroud. Then, use a screwdriver to press out these four tabs that hold the two halves of the cage together. Removing the flywheels is actually quite easy. Take two fine screwdrivers and slot them through the holes in the cage. Press down on the cage and the screwdrivers should push off the flywheels. Finally, remove the motors with a pair of pliers. Alternatively, you can press them out via the shaft. This may break the motor though, so don't do this if you want to keep the motors. Most replacement motors are slightly larger than stock motors, so take a Dremel or a file to the cage to remove the tabs. The solder tabs on our motors are in a different position to stock, so cut out the inside of the back straps to make them fit. The motors should slide in and be securely held down by the back strap. Again, the different shape of our motors requires some cutting to this part of the shell. Don't worry though, it's covered up by the other half. For our build, we will store the battery in the jam door. In order to access it when the shell is closed, cut out the front surface. To hold the battery in place, we'll use a small tab of Velcro at the back and the front of the battery. We will need to fit the plug into the battery compartment, so clear out any tabs in the tray. We will take the battery plug through a hole in the top left hand corner. This needs to be big enough to fit the XT60 plug on the battery. The blaster plug will come through a hole in the right hand side. Make sure this hole isn't big enough to let the plug fall back through. Once done, we should be able to place the battery in and close the jam door. We need to replace the switch for the high current loads that these batteries will draw. It will need some dremeling to fit. This will depend on your switch and the shell that you're using. Cut away enough of the plastic on each shell for the switch to fit nicely in place. Don't worry about overdoing it, hot glue will fix everything. If your micro switch has a roller, snip it off. Now we begin soldering the blaster. Take your switch and identify the common or COM tab and the normally open or NO tab. Wiring to these will turn the motors on when depressed. We want to get our switch in place. Strip off one end of each of the pieces of red wire and twist the strands together tightly. To ensure a good electrical connection, tin the wire by melting a small blob of solder onto your soldering iron, placing it against the wire to heat it up then melting the solder onto the wire, not the iron. To help the wires attach to the switch, melt some solder onto the common and normally open tabs. Now, 
simply remelt the solder on each to attach the wires to the switch. Hot glue, the most divine of modding ingredients. Blob it in heartily to securely attach the micro switch in place behind the rev trigger. Make sure none of it gets on the lever. Hold the switch in place while it cools and ensure the rev trigger makes it click. Our wire is thicker than stock, so use the Dremel to widen any parts as necessary. To get the wire to the motors, channel it through the shell where the motor cage sits. The black wire will go all the way from the motors to the plug, so channel it through the shell. To get the right length, thread the wire through the opposite shell and into the battery compartment. Then, open the shell to ensure enough wire remains. Leave some wire excess and snip off the rest. We need an XT60 plug to connect to our battery. First, cut some heat shrink. Tin the wires as before and slip the heat shrink over it. Melt solder into the plug terminals then dip the wire in vertically. Make sure to match the red to positive to prevent confusion. The solder often forms a bubble, so top up the terminal if necessary. To prevent any electrical shorts, slip the heat shrink over the terminal. The residual heat should cause it to shrink around the terminal slightly. Repeat the process with the other wire. To fully shrink the shrink wrap, use a heat gun, lighter, or the soldering iron to heat it up. Like the switch, Tin the motor terminals, strip and tin the two wires, then solder them together. At this point, I needed to make a little more room with the Dremel. Now is a good point to check if the motors are spinning in the correct direction. To connect the other motor, solder on an uncut piece of wire and path it to the other motor. For the demolisher, it had to go under the back straps, but for other blasters such as the Strife, it can go straight across between the two. Cut it to length, strip, tin, and solder as before. Be careful of your fingers, use pliers to hold the wire if need be. Once done, press the flywheels back onto the new motors. Plug the battery in and give it a test. It works! Now to put it all back together. Clip the cage back together and screw it into the shell. A few small dremeling touches were needed to get it back together. The rev trigger area needed tweaking and the jam door catch hold down needed trimming. We are now done with the rewire, which should look something like this. We only want to add back in the useful internal components, namely the trigger, the pusher, the rev trigger and plate, which I forgot, and the mag catch. We're done. Take a minute to admire your handiwork. The final part is to close up the blaster and rescrew all of the screws. Slide your battery in, connect the plugs, and screw down the cover on your now truly elite blaster. And there you have it. We've converted our Nerf demolisher into a flywheel blaster capable of flinging foam at 100 to 110 feet per second. And I reckon if you had a bit of foam buildup on the flywheels, it could get up to 115 feet per second consistently. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page and select get notifications so that you're notified when I upload the next in the series which will be a mod guide doing the rewire and remote of a rapid strike which is my personal favorite blaster so that should be a good video. So if you guys have any comments or questions about the build process, feel free to ask them below in the comments or on our Facebook page at Mate Test Battle.